Hey, it's Emery and this is my September TBR. So September comes and it's beginning to be autumn. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, but yeah, let's just jump into the TBR. Well, actually no, let's first, I'll talk about what I'm planning to do. So I did my TBR game like normal, five rolls. And then I started watching everyone's, uh, as in like I filmed the rolls. And I started watching everyone's Picopolis on TBR that's beginning to come up. And I thought, you know what, I'll just join in again for that too. So I did five rolls of that and I'll do that at the end. And I kind of merged the two together. I'm not doing 10 books because I'm still kind of coming out of a reading slump. And I really am relying on audiobooks at the moment to get me through my physical books. So I've been like looking for my entire physical TBR on Night Scribd just to try and help me get through this. So yep, um, I think with that, I will just go straight on to my TBR game, Servants of Stairways. Um, I do five rolls each month, it's kind of the same thing as Snakes and Ladders, just I called it Serpents and Stairways because it sounds cooler. Um, yeah, I have the board here actually. Um, so yeah, we started, well last month we finished on space number 22, which is a romance, so we go from there. And then go up, up I think I said up the snakes, up the ladders, down the snakes, and then um, once I hit 100, just back to start again. So, oh, there's also 25 different prompts. So numbers 1 to 25, they're all different and they're in alphabetical order. And then they just appear three other times randomly on the board. So, yep, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I think we should just jump in to roll number one. Right, here we go. I've set it up. I couldn't find the tab. But it got lost in moving. But I found this little owl magnet, that'll do. So that's where we were last time. Let's roll this dice. Again, I'm using my iPad because I don't know where a dice is. Oh, I thought I'd stay zoomed in. Two. Oh, we like that. Short read. And so run number one, okay, off to a great start, was short read, which is brilliant at the moment because I am coming out of a slump. I read quite a bit at the start of August when I was on holiday um, but then the last few weeks I've really been struggling to read again I think it's because I've been reading physically instead of audiobooks and like I said I'm really relying on audiobooks to get me through at the minute but this is not an audiobook this is just a physical read and I've chosen It's Okay I'm really Wearing Really Big Knickers um, by Louise Renson this is the second in the Georgia Nicholson series um, but the font's massive and it shouldn't take me too long. It is really short. It's only like two, 200 pages. Um, so that's George's glossary. About 200, just under 240 pages. So really not, um, not long at all. So it shouldn't take me too long. Um, so yeah, that's my short read. I'm not sure where this goes from the second one. And it's a day and a half now since I snogged the sex god. I think this is also in the movie, the, the stuff that's in this book can't remember but I was gifted by Chloe um over at Books and Psychology I don't think she posts anymore but um you can't really see my orange books there at the top um but yeah she gave me the first one and I've kept that one but I'm just getting them the rest of them in the series um in charity shops and then I can just donate them back or pass them on to people just unhaul them so that's the first one probably got about 50p in a charity shop um for that one so yeah so on to roll number two. Right, let's go. Four. One, two, three, four. Punishment tin. I don't even know if I still have that. Let me go have a look. So I do still have my punishment tin, which is, I don't know why it's called punishment tin. It's literally just a TBR jar, essentially. But my TBR has changed so much since I last edited it. Um, I've just done a massive unhaul of my TBR as well. Um, so it's going to be really old books on here, but I guess that'll be good at clearing them off my shelf. So I think let's just take one out now. Let's pick this one. Lemmings and Snowflakes. Okay. Are we all Lemmings and Snowflakes by Holly Bourne? I suppose it's about time I get through my Holly Bourne collection. So roll number two gave you punishment tin. I'll just grab the thing. So yep. Yeah. It says Lemmings and Snowflakes. So second book on my TBR is Are We All Lemmings and Snowflakes by Holly Bourne. I have not read a Holly Bourne book in a long time. I have pretty much all of them. But this I don't have the audio book for, so I might source it somehow. 
I think I have three audible credits. So I might give it a go if I struggle to read it physically, that is. Because I do want to get back into physically reading. I'm just finding it a bit hard at the minute. So um, I am relying on audiobooks. Um, I don't really know what this is. Welcome to Camp Reset, a summer camp with a difference. A place offering a shot at normality for Olive. A girl on the edge and for her new friends who are all dealing with their own battles. But as Olive settles in, she starts to wonder, maybe it's this messed up world that needs fixing and not them. And so she comes up with a plan because together snowflakes can form avalanches. Um, so yeah, I think it deals with mental health quite a bit. So yeah, that's pretty much it for that one. And so on to roll number three. Rule number three, six. Thriller. That's okay. So rule number three, as you just saw, gave me a thriller, which is great for September. This is the time where I really kick in my thrillers, mysteries, that sort of thing. So the one I've chosen is another short one. It is another physical read. So I haven't got the audio book for this one um, yet anyway. Um, and that's Six Stories by Matt Weselowski. I found this in a charity shop. It sounds really interesting right at my alley and it's quite short. It's about 200 and 225 pages. Um, and it's about a body that's found of a young teenager at an outward bound centre um, in 1997. And then in 2017, this like podcast, crime podcast guy whose like identity is hidden. So he's like a cult favourite within the community online. Um, he then interviews the teenagers that were around at the time, 20 years later, so it's 2017, and it's like, because the, the death of the body was deemed just misadventure, um, but not everyone is convinced and he's trying to figure out whether there was some murder involved, um, but it's pretty much, most of it's written like an audiobook, um, no, it's written like an interview. So I'm very intrigued to see how I like this because I really like Daisy Jones and the Six that was written like that. So we'll see what my take of that on um, mystery is. I don't know where I'm going with this, but I always used to picture this as being like a sound thing. It's all about like podcasts and interviews and whatever. I, from a distance, thought that this was like peaking sound waves, um, but no, it's just trees. So. That's my thriller. Right, let's roll again. Three. One, two, three. Oh no. Hang on, wrong direction. One, two, three. Snake! Doo -doo -doo -doo. Down to middle grade. I've just noticed while editing that when I went back the right direction, I didn't start on the right square. I'm not actually meant to go down the snake. But. Yeah, I'm just going to roll with it because I like the rolls and it's, it's chill, it's chill. But yeah, I have just noticed that I didn't start on the right square again. That's okay, that's alright. Next up we have middle grade, which is brilliant because, um, if you don't know, I have 20 children, no, I have about 23 children's classics now, all in matching editions, um, and I'm making my way through them. So that's great for that. My tripod is about to fall over. There we go. And the one I've decided to pick for this is kind of an autumnal one. It's kind of probably should be an October read, but it's Gobble Gobelino the Witch's Cat. Um, it works really well for now for the mood I'm in as well. And the audiobook is on my library app, which I have taken it out of. So um, it's only like three hours. I probably could very like look at the size of the font. Could very easily read this in like a couple hours anyway. But it would just be nice to listen to an audiobook. This, I don't know when this was published, probably quite a long time ago, 1942. But this is about a witch's cat, um, Gobelino. He doesn't want to be a witch's cat. Um, he just wants to be, you know, sit by the fire, just, you know, have a nice family vibe. He doesn't want to do spells or ride broomsticks. And so he goes in search of this family, whereas his sister is very much the perfect, like, witch's cat, I think. Anyway, and it says, will Gobelino ever find the home of his dreams? I'm, I'm excited to read this. I am. It, it looks really wholesome. Really what I'm in the mood for at the minute. So I think with that, let's go on to roll number five, the final roll of my TBR game. And finally, roll number five. One. Oh, I thought we'd go up a ladder then. Most recent purchase. Okay. So as you just saw, roll number five gave me most recent. So this is either most recently, um, well, this is my most recently acquired so whether it's the most recent purchase out from the library 
um the most recent saved audiobook on audible or something um or like gifted to me and so I, there's a couple books behind me that are going to be in my august haul um and one of them is only on the weekends i bought this week or two just over a week ago nearly two weeks ago doesn't actually matter but i didn't have words i haven't bought many books recently um because i'm trying to cut down my tbr quite drastically um as you'll see there's a big unhaul coming soon um and yeah this is something i did allow myself to buy it's also signed by dean atta i did meet dean atta at um yalk and i got the black flamingo signed so now i've got both of them signed even if this one's not directly to me um but yeah this is once again it's quite quite a chunker but it's written in verse so shouldn't take too long um a nice easy read hopefully and yeah i really love the cover and like the gold we love foiling we love foiling so that's that one um i probably should say what it's about i believe it's about a boy who's beginning to fall in love or like the guy he's been crushing on begins to like him back but then he goes away with his dad to film a movie or something film directing yeah so they go to scotland and it's like a long distance between the two of them but then this other guy appears from the set that comes into his life and yeah that's pretty much all i know about that one so i'm excited to read it and i'm excited for it to be long it sounds bad but i want my stats to be bumped up because i've been reading quite short books at the minute so we need i'm behind behind on my pages count my part, pages goal sorry so i then randomly decided to do becca's percoplophon um which is happening the whole length of september i believe so yeah i did five rolls of that and i'm the way i'm going to do it i'm going to incorporate the books from my game i'm not reading a whole new set of books i think there's only one additional book that i've added in because it worked perfectly for a prompt um so yeah i think with that let's just go on to roll number one i did have some technical issues with my printer so i wasn't able to print off the board so as you'll see i have to do it on the screen but yeah you'll see here's roll number one hello on to the bucoplathon prompts which i very impromptu after filming the rolls for my last one thought why not do it because everyone else seems to be doing it however i do not have a functioning printer our printer is broken at the moment i've just spent ages trying to print this off and just it's not happening so here we have it on my laptop um yeah i think that's as good as it's gonna get but we have our two dice on the screen here and let's just roll so what's that seven so one two three four five six seven people people apparently i also can't Play Monopoly right because I counted go as the first step instead of starting from there. Yeah, I don't think I've ever played Monopoly where go has counted in the first square, so I don't know why I thought that it does for this one. But yeah, there you go. Another screw up on my behalf, so apologies. So for roll number one, as you just saw, it gave me the prompt people. For that, I've picked only at the weekends because there's two people as the focal point on the cover, so that's why i picked that one and i've already discussed what this is about but yeah that's what oh look at that glow mm. i don't know what that was that's the pick i've <laughs> picked for that prompt because it's got people on the cover i suppose we should just go on to run number two interesting start but let's go again we've got another seven we've got seven again so people one two three four five six seven publish slash set 2000 to 2019 and then as you just saw roll number two gave me a book published or set from 2000 to 2019 for that one i've picked it's okay i'm wearing really big knickers this is first published in 2000 so just just in the boundaries um but it's a nice short one so i thought that works perfect nice and easy condensing my tbr we love it we love to see it i suppose yeah roll number three Okay, and then let's go again for roll number three. That is five. So where are we there? One, two, three, four, five. Favourite setting. Interesting. Roll number three gave me favourite setting and I took that as favourite time period, as in <laughs> modern day. My favourite setting is modern day in books. I prefer books that are contemporary, 
I suppose. Um, I do like Agatha Christie's and stuff that's like 30s mysteries onwards. Like I like Agatha Christie, <laughs> essentially is what I'm saying. But most of the books I read are contemporary, modern day. So I've picked six stories for that because it's 1997 and 2017. It's kind of within the time frame that I enjoy to read from. So that's that one. So that's why I've picked that one is its favourite setting in some way or other. Right, let's just turn the page of my notebook. So, on to roll number four. Roll number four. We have three. So, from favourite setting, one, two, three. Emoji generator. <laughs> random emoji. As you just saw, it is a random emoji, um, or like an emoji generator. This was actually quite interesting. I quite enjoyed this one. I wasn't expecting it, but... It did good, it did good. Uh, this is the one that I'm adding a new book in for because it fit really well. Um, here's a video of me finding out what the emoji is. Right, let's do this. The random emoji generator. Let's go for one. And randomise. Is that like a moon? I think that's like a new moon emoji. Moon, okay, okay. okay. So when I saw that it was like a new moon, like a like a black moon, you know, at the start of the moon phase. Um, you can't really tell on my laptop, but it, that's what it was. Um, obviously, there's new moon, twilight. Not going to go there. Um, I typed in moon into my Goodreads to see what was already on my shelf. Burning moon obviously came up. Blood moon, I've read. Um, there was two. There was one called Emily of the New Moon, which is an... Um, a series, a second in a series which I haven't read, but the one that fit perfectly is The Black Moon by Winston Graham. This is the fifth book in the Poldark series, which is conveniently the one I am up to. So um, it's not not that short and the font's not big, but I have the audiobook out for my library app at the moment and I have that out for three weeks as of today and it's the 30th of August today, so I've got time. That's the new edition. I can't really remember what happened in the last one. The last one was called Warlegan. So I believe this is the start of season three of the show. Um, yeah, because I believe it's like books one and two, season one, books two and three, uh, three and four, sorry, season two and five and six. I think that's how it's done. Can't be 100% certain, but yeah, this is also now going onto my TBR. The doorbell has just gone. I think my brother's getting it. Oh, it's Henry's friend, it's Henry's friend. Um, okay, so, book number five, roll number five, sorry. And finally, roll number five is four. So go, one, two, three, four. Autumn, that's actually rather convenient because it is the start of autumn, really, for September. Oh, Henry, Henry's got a friend over and he's coming upstairs. I really don't want anyone else to hear. My brother doesn't care, but anyone else, I feel really awkward feeling in front of. And we share a wall, like. Oh my god. Okay, anyway, I'll just talk a bit quieter. So as you just saw, run number five gave me autumn, and so for that I've picked Gobelino, the witch's cat. That's the doorbell again. Okay, I need to wrap this up because people keep coming into my house. Um, Gobelino, the witch's cat. Fits perfectly, it's a nice orangey autumnal colour. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for my TBR. Okay, so it's all hidden happening out in my hallway now. Okay, right. So thank you very much for watching this TBR video. Let's get a stack together. There we go. These are the books I'm hoping to read in September. And I definitely can see myself at least reading four or five of them, at least. Um, so yeah, these are the ones that I'm aiming to read. Hopefully all of them. I'm not saying that I'm just aiming to read four. I want to read all of them. But at least I can see myself reading at least four or five of them. So hopefully, yeah, you'll come back to a wrap up in October and discover that I have read them. That's it. So thank you very much for watching this video. Um, if you are new around here, please hit the subscribe button because it really does mean a lot to me. My phone cut off just so it was closing up the video but if you did enjoy the video please give it a like um i do really appreciate it and let me know what you're going to be reading next month and if you're taking part in pick up this one so yeah thank you very much for watching and i'll see you soon with a brand new video
very soon, hopefully. Bye.